First Peter chapter two verse twenty four. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, members of 2,500 branch churches all over the world, including the United States, Canada, Honduras, Peru, Argentina, Germany, France, Russia, Belgium, Netherlands, and African countries, including Kenya, Uganda, and Congo, and in China, Japan, Pakistan, Indonesia, Philippines, Taiwan, India, Mongolia, Egypt. And Korean branch churches and local sanctuary members, those who are attending their service on the internet all over the world, children of Sunday school, and viewing audiences. In the last session, I explained to you God's providence in Jesus being born in a stable, being laid in a manger, and suffering poverty. I also told you about the blessings that come upon us by that providence. According to the law of the spiritual realm that dictates the wages of sin is death, mankind was destined to death due to sins. Jesus was hung on a tree and shed his blood to save us. He was hung on a tree to redeem us from the curse of the law. And he shed his blood, which is the same as his life, to redeem us from death. But as I told you in the last session, when he was born in the stable, laid in the manger, and while he was leading a life of poverty, there was no shedding of blood. He did not have to shed his blood to redeem us pr from poverty, because poverty itself is not a sin. But to redeem us from our sins, there had to be the shedding of blood. He also had to shed his blood to heal us of our diseases and infirmities, because these things are also caused by sins. This is the eleventh session of the message of the cross. Today, I'll tell you about the providence of Jesus shedding his precious blood for us. Through this message, I hope you will more deeply realize the love of the Lord. Who received sufferings and shed His blood for us, and give thanks to Him from the depths of your heart. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will be freed from all diseases and infirmities by the precious blood and enjoy the blessings of health. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, viewing audiences, when the time came for the crucifixion in the providence of God, Jesus was arrested by the Jews. And he was handed over to the court of Pilate, the governor of Judea. Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent, but of the pressure from the crowd, he permitted Jesus to be scourged and to be crucified. Crucifixion is such a harsh punishment, but being scourged is also never a light punishment. The well-trained soldiers of the Roman Empire. Which was the absolute power of the world at that time, whipped Jesus. The whip wrapped around his body one and a half times. It did not only tear out the flesh, but the piece of lead at the end of the whip penetrated into the body. When the soldier snatched the whip away strongly, pieces of flesh were torn away by the whip. Jesus was scourged in this way. He was wounded to the extent that his bones were exposed, and he shed so much blood. Why was Jesus scourged, and why did he have to shed blood? Why did God let His one and only Son suffer such great pains? Isaiah chapter 53 verses 5 to 6 says, "But he was pierced for our transgressions; he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him." And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep. Why sheep? Sheep go anywhere if there is no shepherd for them. Have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. 
And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. As said, Jesus was whipped, and he shed blood to heal us. As we'll see shortly in later part, Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 says that if we keep God's commands and do not sin, no disease will fall upon us, namely, to be healed of a disease, we first have to be forgiven of our sins. Matthew chapter 9 verse 2 says, Some man brought to him a paralytic lying on a mat. Today, people would have come on wheelchairs, but at that time there was no wheelchair. So he was on a mat, probably carried by four men at four sides. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. When Jesus commanded after this, the paralytic was made well, and he stood up and walked. Before healing of a disease, Jesus first resolved the problem of sin. Before solving the problem of sin, God looks at our faith first. We can be healed only when we have faith. We can live by the word of God, become righteous, and God's child who resembles God only when we have faith. God looks at our faith and works according to it. Also John chapter 5 verse 14 says, Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Why does something worse happen? It is because you commit sins again. If you do not commit sins again, you will not have any more problems. Something worse will not happen to you. Therefore, to redeem us from diseases, there had to be shedding of blood. Jesus was whipped and shed his blood to redeem us from our sins and suffer the pain on our behalf to set us free from all the pains of disease. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Matthew 8.17 says, This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our in infirmities. Infirmities are incurable diseases, and things like lameness, polio, being born with disability, and so on, and carried our diseases. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24 says, By his wounds you have been healed. It does not say you will be healed, but you have been healed. Here a perfect tense is used. Thus, those who believe that Jesus redeemed us from our diseases by being whipped and shedding his blood do not have to suffer from infirmities or diseases. But some people who profess their faith in God say, I am weak, so I sometimes fall and commit sins. It is difficult to live according to God's word completely. If you think and confess that you are weak, you cannot but be weak. If you confess that it is difficult to cast off sins, your life in Christ will be difficult. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. If you confess, I am healthy by the grace of God, and I am good in any kind of situations, God's grace and strength will come upon you as you confess. So you will be able to overcome tiredness and something impossible will change into something possible. When you receive prayer for healing, you should not confess, I believe I will be healed since I received prayer. You should confess, I have already been healed. Then God will work according to your faith. If you say, I believe I will be healed, but I still have the pain, then it is not faith. 
Some even say, how can I say I am already healed while I still have the pain? Isn't it lying? But if you understand spiritual faith, you will not say this. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Here, too, it does not say believe that you will receive, but believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 to 2 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commanded for. Faith is not to confess something when it is already accomplished. When we hope for something that is not visible with faith, it will become reality. When we look at something with faith, something out of nothing will be created. But it does not mean that it will be accomplished just by confessing with your lips while you do not even have the faith in your heart. When you confess your faith stemming from the depth of your heart with lips, it will be done according to your faith. Therefore, confessing that you have already been healed and you have already received it is not a lie but a confession of spiritual faith. It is telling the truth. Let me give you an example. If you cut a branch with a flower from the tree and put it in a vase, is the flower alive or dead? Are these flowers alive or dead? Do they have the roots or not? It seems that it is alive, but since it is cut off from the root, it has already lost its life. So if you know this fact, you will say it is dead. Because they were cut off from the roots, they will wither after a couple of days. They are dying even right now. Likewise, about those who have not accepted the Lord, the Bible says that they are dead. They certainly breed, eat, and drink, but it says they are dead. Because they do not have eternal life in them and they will fall into hell, the Bible says they are dead. It is because they do not have eternal life in them. They seem to be alive for the moment, but they will finally end up in hell. So it can be said that they are dead considering their future. It is the same with the healing of a disease when you look at it with faith. If you believe and confess, the germ or the cancer is already burnt by the power of God, the Lord will work according to your faith. It is because Jesus was already whipped and shed his blood to redeem us from our infirmities and diseases. Because I believed all the words of the Bible since I accepted the Lord, I could live by the word, and so I have never been sick or been to any hospital up until now. I have never been to a hospital or taken any medicines. It is the same with all my family members. God works like this, according to our faith. But if you do not either believe this or confess it with faith, your disease will not be cured. No matter how many times you receive the prayer, you will believe in your heart, I am still sick. I am not healed yet, so you are actually still sick. Unless you break off these negative thoughts, you cannot experience God's work. If you say, I believe, then even paralyzed body will begin to move stand up and walk immediately. When I was in fourth grade, I hurt my ribs once. Since then, when my body became weak or during summer, the pain got worse and I had hard time breathing due to the pain. But when I accepted the Lord, even this was healed along with all other diseases. About two years later I was healed, 
The ribs began to ache again when I heard it lifting up something heavy. It was so painful that I could not even walk properly. Then I thought to myself, our God is Almighty and He healed all my diseases. Why should I feel painful just because of this little thing? So I laid my hand on the part and prayed earnestly. I believe it will be healed immediately after this prayer and that I will walk without any pain. Then the negative thoughts disappeared and I gained the faith that God would work according to my faith. Right after the prayer, I got up and ran and amazingly the pain disappeared. I almost doubted whether I really suffered the great pain for many hours. The power of God, the Creator, does not only heal diseases, but it shows the work of creation itself. In the Bible, we can see even when God commanded dry bones, the tendons were attached, the flesh was made, skin covered it, and God's breath was put in that they formed the great army. Since the beginning of this church, numerous members have experienced God's healing works, especially during revival meetings or overseas crusades, countless people are healed at once and they come to the stage to testify. After they accept Jesus Christ and repent of their sins thoroughly, even severe diseases were healed. Just by receiving the prayer from the pulpit, even final stage cancer, AIDS, and many other incurable diseases are healed. Even such infirmities as blindness, muteness, deafness, and lameness are restored to normal. Sometimes before I began the prayer for the sick, even during the praise or the message, healing works descend on them along with tears of repentance. Let me introduce to you one person who met the Lord of healing like this. Deaconess Youngmi Yu in Masan felt her sight was getting worse very quickly since last January. Her sight turned yellow. Things were crooked or bumpy in her eyes. She also had dizziness and nausea. She was diagnosed to be with Harada disease, which is a very rare eye problem. Blisters are formed inside the eyes, so she had disorder in her sight. The cause of the disease is not yet known. Even after treatment, it is very difficult to recover the normal sight. Furthermore, if the blisters get bigger, they could cover the optic nerve and she could lose her eyesight completely. Even after hearing this diagnosis, she was neither disappointed nor discouraged, but rather gave thanks to God and rejoiced. Although she could have become blind and there was no cure, she was still joyful and thankful. She believed in the Lord who redeemed us from diseases and infirmities by being whipped. Since she had seen so many works of God's power manifested in this church, she thought it was a chance to be healed by faith and give glory to God. She first looked back on, her, on herself and began to repent her wrongdoings one by one. Even before that, she had experienced God's healing her son, but later, when her son was ill, she went to hospitals rather than re relying on God. She did not have peace when she was doing her duty in the church. She judged and condemned the brothers in faith. As she remembered these things, she repented from her deep heart. After that, in joy and confidence, she came to Seoul and received my prayer. Soon after she received my prayer, she found out her sight was normal. As she was diagnosed in the hospital again, the check showed all her blisters were gone. Moreover, her sight that had been 0.8 and 0.25 before became better to 1.2 in both eyes. 1.2 is the most ordinary sight. God healed her according to her faith and made her sight better than before. This is true faith. She did not worry, but rather was joyful and gave thanks. She thought she had a chance to give glory to God. 
Then she repented of her past sins and then came to receive prayer. So God worked immediately. God healed her according to her faith and God gave her a bonus to make her eyesight better. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus redeemed us from our diseases by being whipped. But even among those who say they believe in this fact, there are some people who still suffer from diseases. What is the reason? It is because they did not follow the righteousness of God. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 says, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His eyes, if you pray, pay attention to His commands and keep all His decrees, it says all His decrees. It's not that you keep big ones and neglect small ones, but you keep all His decrees. I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Here, Egypt spiritually refers to the world and the ten plagues that came upon Egypt during the Exodus refer to all the diseases on this earth. If we keep God's commands, we will not have any disease. Even if we get sick, if we just repent and turn back, as God said, I am the Lord who heals you, the Almighty God the Father will heal us. So please check whether you have faith or not. If you truly believe that God is Almighty and that God is your Father and God the Healer, what should you do when you're sick? You should rely on God the Almighty completely. You shouldn't rely on the world after receiving prayer a couple of times if the prayer does not work for you. It is true faith to rely on God completely. It tells us to do what is right, not in our eyes or man's eyes, but in God's eyes. What is right is different for different persons. If there are ten people, all of them have different righteousness. Their thoughts are different. The broadness or of their heart and their righteousness are all different. Why do people have arguments? It is because everybody insists he is right. They have arguments because each one says only he is right. It is because while they mature from birth, they see, hear, and learn different things. Their circumstances and values are all different. About something that one man thinks is right, another man can think it is not right. Therefore, we should take the Word of God, who is the truth itself, as the only standard. What is right in God's eyes is only true right. For example, if other children beat your children, you will all have different reactions. Some parents feel greatly distressed and go to the other parents to protest. So sometimes, the fight between children becomes the fight between parents. Some parents scold their child who is crying after getting beaten up, saying, Why are you always beaten like a fool? You hit back too. Sometimes some parents say, If you are hit once, you hit him back two or three times. However, what does the truth say? If somebody strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Follow peace. Love even your enemy. This is the kind of righteousness in God's sight. If a person is taught and raised in the righteousness of God, he would be able to embrace and understand many people. He would be able to become a great leader. It is because even if it seems to be losing for the moment to follow God's righteousness, God will eventually recognize him and lift him up. When they hear they should keep all God's commands, they think it is hard saying, how can I keep so many commands? But to keep God's commands is not something difficult. If you believe that you can obey it since it is God's command, 
and that it is not you who does the work, but the Holy Spirit who is helping you, and God is giving you grace and strength, so you can do it, it will be easy to practice God's word. Moreover, even though it seems that there are so many commands, the commands can be summarized as the Ten Commandments. Also, only if you accomplish the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of love and the beatitude, you can do what is right in God's eyes. If you just accomplish these things, you will naturally accomplish all other things. As for me, since I was a new believer, when I came across a command of God reading the Bible, I obeyed it immediately. I wrote it down as I note. If I could not obey immediately and prayed about it, soon I could cast them off. You cannot obey because you do not try to obey and because you love the world more than God. You probably have family code of conduct. You can have peace when you keep that code. You have rules in the schools. You should follow them. In your company, there must be rules that you have to follow. Also, there is law in the country. By keeping all these laws, we are living in order. Is this a hard life? Drivers keep the traffic rules. They should keep the traffic lights. They should have some patience to wait for the car in front of them too. If there is traffic jam, they should wait. It gets more congested when people try to go to the side and all of the place. Anyway, we can keep all these rules. If you keep them, the society, your company, your school and your family will have peace. But is it hard to keep those rules? Not at all. If you make a good habit, it won't be hard at all. If you truly love God and have hope for heaven, and if you long for the glory and rewards in heaven, it will not be difficult at all to keep God's commands. And there is no reason for you to be unable to obey. It is difficult not to keep God's law. For me, it was very easy to keep God's word, and I was happy. It is the will, heart, and word of God that He loves us, saves us, has given us His one and only Son, and has prepared such beautiful kingdom of heaven for us. That is why I was so happy to obey such word. Also, it is a blessing to obey. When I was a new believer, I did not even clearly know about the heavenly kingdom. I was just so grateful to God for healing me, and because I loved Him so much, I began to obey His words. Compared to my situation, now you have listened and learned about the kingdom of heaven so clearly, so it should be much easier for you to obey. Even if you think I have so many things to cast off, so when will I be able to cast off all of them? You do not have to worry. Whether it be anger, hatred, or an adulterous mind, if you concentrate, concentrate on and cast off the things that you find most difficult to cast away with prayers and fasting, then you will be able to very easily cast away the remaining things. It is just like after pulling out the main root of a tree, it is very easy to pull out the remaining roots. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, we see a record about King Asa of southern kingdom of Judah. Actually, King Asa served God very well. But when the king of northern kingdom of Israel came up to attack the kingdom of Judah, his faith, with which he had depended on God before, changed. He gave bribe to a Gentile country to ask them to fight against the northern kingdom of Israel. About this, a foreseer came and rebuked the king. He told the king that even when such a strong Gentile army attacked them, God drove the enemy away when the king depended on God. But now the king relied on the Gentile army, so God turned his face away from the king. When he relied on only on God, God protected him. But when he did not rely on God but on the world and other people, God turned his face away. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth. God searches throughout the earth and the entire universe to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. 
It means God shows His power to those who offer all their heart, mind, and soul and strength. You have done a foolish thing, and from now on you will be at war. Even after this rebuke, King Asa did not repent. Rather, the king persecuted the foreseer and made up more walls of sin against God. Finally, he had a severe disease in the 39th year of his reign. One has a big vessel when he can listen to a rebuke. King Saul did not listen when a man of God, Samuel, rebuked him. So he finally went the way of death. On the contrary, when God's beloved servant David did something wrong, a man of God came to him and pointed it out. Then David immediately repented thoroughly. That wrongdoing was accused by Satan, and because of that, he received trials. But he received those trials with joy. This is a kind of big vessel. God could not but love David and used him greatly. David showed one of the best examples of faith. So King Asa had a disease in his 39th year of reign. Then what should he have done? He should have repented thoroughly and depended on God, but King Asa still did not ask God but doctors. What should he have done? What should you do in this situation? He should have repented and relied on God, but he still relied on the physicians, not on God. Since he was the king, he knew all the best doctors. He consulted one, and if that did not work, he consulted another. So it was Physicians in plural form. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 13 says, Then in the 41st year of his reign, Asa died and rested with his fathers. Finally, he died of that disease. If he had relied on God, God would have been pleased and healed him so that he would have lived longer. But since he relied on the world and the people, he could not see any work of God but just died of the disease. God was very disappointed by his deed, and that is why God let this incident be written in the Bible. By recording this, God is giving us a lesson as to what faith is really and what it is to truly believe and love God. It is the same today. Many people say, I believe in the Almighty God. I believe in God who controls the life, death, fortune, and misfortune. But what do they do if something happens to them in reality? They do not rely on God but on the world. They do not ask God with prayers, but they depend on hospital and medicines. It is the case with most of those who come to receive my prayer. They have been to the hospitals, spent so much money, and done a lot of things, but nothing worked. They received death sentence from the hospital. Only then they come to receive prayer. So it is not really true faith. They come to receive prayer because they cannot rely on the world now, but still, thankfully, our God heals most of them. But if they had come immediately when they heard the preacher without relying on the world, they must have been healed so quickly without much pain and without spending so much money. They could have given glory to God greatly. No matter how much they hear the word of God, because they do not keep God's commands and because they do not love God from the depth of their heart, they do not gain spiritual faith with which they can be healed. You have received the right to become the children of God by receiving the Holy Spirit. Now, if you come out from darkness and act in light and righteousness, the wall of sin between you and God will be torn down. To the extent that this wall is torn down, you gain faith with which you can truly believe, and to the extent then you gain this kind of faith, you will be able to experience God's works in all aspects of your life. You will not get any disease, and even if you get one momentarily, it will be resolved if you just believe you have been healed. Let me conclude the message, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, viewing audiences, to cure a serious disease in this world, how much sufferings do you have to take up? 
it'll cost a fortune, and you have to go through great pain in the process of treatment. Also, there is no guarantee of complete healing. Also, even if you are cured after surgery, sometimes you have complications. But if you completely rely on God and show your faith, you will be healed perfectly without any pain or after effects. Also, your faith will grow greatly through the experience of healing and you give glory to God so that you can save many more souls. You can have double, triple, quadruple, or even more effects. Of course, since the beginning of our church, I have never taught anybody not to take medicines or not go to the hospitals. It is because when the patient himself does not have faith, he will not be healed through prayer even if other people urge them to do so. I just tell the truth and let him choose within his own faith. Dear brothers and sisters, have I ever taught you that you must not take any medicine or go to hospital or receive a surgery? I just tell you the truth and you, you choose according to your faith. I let him know that Jesus took all our infirmities and diseases and gave us healing by being whipped, so we should depend on God. But he can experience the work of healing only when he himself shows faith and acts according to that faith. Because many Manmin members always experience these healing works, now most of you are healthy. Your children and your family members are healthy even without going to any hospitals. How great blessing this is! Because you only rely on God and are healed by God, your faith grows day by day. Your soul prospers and your faith grows, so no disease or germs can infect you. You solve your problems with faith. Most of you and your family members do not go to hospital for one year or 10, 15 or even 20 years. I hope you will fully believe in the Lord who has redeemed us from all diseases and infirmities by being whipped and shedding his blood. Please do not confess anything negative like I am still weak, I still have pain but make a positive confession that you are healthy depending on the precious blood of the Lord. If you say, I'm tired, I worked all day and attended the all-night service having no sleep, so I am tired, then you will still be tired even after one year. If you confess, believe and go forward saying, I feel good and full of the Holy Spirit since I attended the all-night service praising God and praying to Him. I will feel even better and tiredness will leave me and I will be a healthy person. Then you will be healthy and have no tiredness as you confess after some months. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will diligently keep God's commands and rely on Him completely in all matters so that you will always be able to give glory to God with the works of God who is able to do anything. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. The work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing part of God. Hallelujah, the Almighty God of love. Lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleansed with the blood of our Lord 
from head to toe, the five viscera and the six entrails, each joint, and all nerves, tissues, and cells manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria, and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases, and newly discovered diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness, and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown, and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high power of creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive. Rejoin broken bones and make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened, darkness go away. May the light come, Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration and prayer. Add faith, hope and love. And may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding, and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God, I have received his answers, and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
아 입가에 차냐 절로 저... 